It's mailbag time again. What the hell have you been buying this time? Don't forget to click like and subscribe if you're new here, or if you like mailbag videos, that kind of thing. Yeah, he keeps on asking for that. Hmm. A whole bunch of USB drives. Oh no, not some more. So you've got some key rings to go with them, obviously, and these things. What capacity were these? I think these are quite small ones. Because smaller drives are getting harder and harder to find. Um, because you know technology's moving on, that sort of thing, and now you're getting you know 64 gigabyte drives and so on, not a problem. But some older things or simpler technologies don't like big drives. This doesn't actually say what it is. Oh, there's a stick of this. It's four gig. Here we go. So is that one? Eight gig, sixteen gig, four gig, four gig. That's a four. Another eight. So yeah. Okay, so it's between 4 gig and 8 gig drives and a 16. The reason I've got these is because things like oscilloscopes, like my signaling scopes and, and some other things as well, other bits of equipment which may use as USB drives, they don't like to have too big a drive on there. They only like small drives. They don't work properly with big high capacity drives because obviously the file system is not quite right and they just don't work properly. Getting some smaller drives and having them in stock so when you need them later on in years time, you know, a couple of years may not be get these things then this sort of capacity it might be really hard to find these small ones and then you might have a problem with your equipment where you can't plug a USB drive into it anymore because your drives are too big the cautionary thing I don't need them really I've already got some drives but I'm looking into the future I'm thinking right get some small drives whilst they're still available before they completely disappear because they are getting harder to find you never quite know what you're going to need dear you? right rubbish again Seem to have a heckler. Right. It's a wire of some kind. Okay, it's a dual USB socket. So these are basic extensions. The reason I got this is, was originally from my wife's car. My intention was to actually build in a USB socket to have it all nice off the stereo. So it's got some USB plugs on there already, and the idea was I could just bring those out with extensions, mount them to, into the face view of, of the car, you know, into the dashboard, into some unused switch locations, that sort of thing. You know, just tidy up so you've got a wire sticking at the dashboard, that kind of thing. Just so it's a bit tidier. You know, what I ended up doing in the end was I actually got a USB charger instead, which I've shown in the previous mailbag. That actually worked quite nicely. That's installed already. I've already put that in. So these I don't actually need now, but I'm sure I'll use them for something one day. As is always the case. You're wasting money again. <sighs> no pleasing some people. That's some awesome packaging. Got these MC1648P. Well that's give ECOs I suppose really. So these were used as a control chip in the Solotron 7061 multimeter. I showed a previous board, I think it's the last mailbag, where it's got this chip on a little PCB and it's a standalone VCO, you just inject a voltage into it and get a frequency out. These chips are used in that as well. I thought I'd get some spares because it's in my Solotron, I like to have spare parts or things like that. Yeah, I've got a pack of five. I probably will never use them. Also have a package over here from Banggood, which is a review item, so we get to that. So make sure you stick around and see what that is. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Yeah, like and subscribe. Right. So, these are some ceramic screwdrivers. I just basically stocked up, because ceramic screwdrivers, they are a little bit fragile. You can break them if you drop them, or... You know, you end up using a bit too much force on an adjustment or something because it's just stuck. That can happen. So, what we've got here. So these are actually fairly cheap. They were a fairly good price. So we'll see how long they last. The actual markings for the sizes are actually small. Anyway, let's see if we can read them. It's just over here. See that? Can you read that? I can't. <laughs> Point 0.4 was it? Point 0.4 by... I don't know, 0.9 is it? I can't read it. It's so small. Is that on there? Something by two? 
0.4 by 2 0.4 by 1.3, I'll see that one and 0.4 by 1.8 so these are all flat blades things like trimmers and things like that like um, capacitive trimmers or inductor trimmers metal cans that you find in RF gear we've also got here 0.4 by 2.4 uh, that is 0.7 by 2.5 these will be flat blades so far here's a crosshead uh, which is a pH 0 and oh mystery we never know what this one is oh there we go pH 1.7 hmm <laughs> okay but when you're doing electronic stuff you need the right tools to do the job you can't always get away with using a true drive which kind of fits because you can cause damage you can break trimmers and all sorts of stuff especially you've got ferrite cores if you've got a ferrite core you really need to be careful and use the right tool yeah because you've never broke one have you <clears throat> I mean, for instance, I've got this old set over here, which is a really old screwdriver set, and I keep a couple of ceramics in here. These different sizes, a quite wide one and a finer one, and both of these are actually broken. They both had the chips broken off slightly, where they have just not liked being pushed a bit. This one's still kind of okay, but this one it still has its uses, but it's not great. I need to actually do something about that and maybe replace it completely with one of these new ones I just picked up. But yeah, you have to have ceramic trimmers. This looks interesting from Thailand I think I know what this is based on where it's come from ah oh, come on I'm gonna get a real knife out okay this is the kit which I need to build now I actually saw this feature on someone else's channel don't forget to like and subscribe. And I can't remember whose channel it was. Was it? It might be Simple Electronics or maybe a pile of stuff. I can't remember whose channel it was now. But this is a curve tracer, very basic curve tracer. It uses the X Y mode of an oscilloscope. So this board here is the actual curve tracer bit. This outputs different voltages and currents, stuff like that, to give a curve for a NPN or PNP transistor. This uses X Y mode in your scope. Pretty common technique but this gives the stepped response but I can't remember what the actual maximum voltage was in this it was it's still limited it gives you an idea and I thought I'd get one of these and also splashed out and I bought the power supply version so this comes with a plus or minus 15 volt power supply as well so technically you kind of need to you know get a plus or minus 15 volt transformer I've probably got one sitting around actually I've got a box of transformers so I probably have a transformer I can use with it and I can build that into a box standalone or I could just be a bit lazy and hook it up to my power supply because this is a dual output, well triple output power supply dual isolated outputs on it so I can actually do plus and minus rails on this thing if I really want to so if I really wanted to do that I could just be lazy not bother building this board but that wouldn't be the right thing to do would it so I really should build the power supply up for this thing and that would be good then yeah you're never lazy are you? you never get stuff like that done eventually do you? ever yeah, you never leave projects unfinished, do you? And the last thing. So this I'll be doing a proper review on as well. Um, I'm not sure when the review will be coming out. It may be just before or after this video. It depends on timing and how things go with other footage and other projects I've got on the go. So we'll see how this goes. But anyway, make sure you watch out for this review. I will link it down below. So this is an item from Banggood for free. So thank you much Banggood for sending it to me at no cost. As usual disclaimer. IPC tester. You're supposed to use this for testing things like IP cameras and well, security cameras and video feeds, that kind of thing. That's basically what it's meant for. And I think you can test networks as well with it. And I got this so I can work on my wife's car, believe it or not. Oh look, it comes in a nice box nice case. Instructions? Yes, yeah, look at the instructions. Yep, yeah, okay, no good. Now, okay. Read the instructions, idiot. Okay, I'll read the instructions. Right. A bit of full view in this. I'll show you a quick overview. I'll show you this now. 
and bubble wrap. Get the teaser, what's coming up? The size of that screen, that thing, that's awesome. You guess it's touch screen over here. There's the outputs. Inputs, outputs, oh, it's upside down. Electrons might fall out, but there's no electrons yet because it's not powered up. So we're safe. Hi Dave. So we've got an SD card slot, power button, LAN connection, HD in, so that's if you've got a HDMI system. And you've also got uh, AHD, CVI, TVI, XSDI, HD, SDI. Yeah, great. As if you know what they are. Anyway, um, on the bottom side, we have some more connections. 12 volt in, IS-485, audio in, UTP and scan, so that's for checking networks, and the VGA port. And it looks like we've got a thing there for a strap to put around your wrist. So I'll be doing a full review on this. So the idea was this, as I was saying it's going to work on my wife's car, is I'm trying to get the reversing camera system on that thing working. So this has got a factory reversing camera, and the original factory stereo is long gone. Don't worry around to that. A bunch of accessories and stuff in there too, and it's like a charger. So excellent, I'll be looking at that in review. Watch out for that coming up. So wife's car, it's a reversing camera. I want to get it working. And uh, I'm having trouble deciphering how to connect it up to the stereo because it just doesn't make sense. So the information I found so far doesn't match the car. That's why I got this thing from Banggood. Thanks Banggood. I'm going to use this thing to try and find the video signals in the car so that I can then probe around, find the video camera signal from that rear camera. Now the weird thing is this car's actually got front cameras as well. It's got like a split front camera, so it's actually like a blind spot camera. And it's on the very front of the car, and it actually goes sideways. So if you're trying to pull out from somewhere, and you can't see, like a T-junction for example, and you can't see because of traffic, these cameras point sideways, so you can actually see what's coming down the road. So I'd really like to get that feature working. I think it's got like a main control box hidden somewhere, which I haven't yet to find yet, and all that is part of that system. So I think it goes to the rear camera, and those front cameras, and there's an output from that main control box, which then would normally go to the original factory stereo. I think. I'm hoping that's how it's set up. I found the camera feed from the rear camera. I know where that cable is. I've traced it all the way through the car to the passenger side of the car. Then it disappears. I can't find it after that. It's a bit hard because there's lots of wires and it's all crammed in. It just disappears. I can't follow it any further. So the idea is to try and use this thing here to help me do that. And then get that reversing camera and front camera system working on that thing. And implemented and hooked up to the new stereo which I installed recently, which has got a nice big screen on it. It's like a double den thing with a video screen on it. And that's the idea of getting that particular unit so we could hook up to the original cameras. But so far I've been unsuccessful. I'll be doing a video on that anyway. If I do get it working then I'll be doing a video on it. I've recorded footage, but there's no point in publishing a video if I can't actually get it to work. So, you know. Click like and subscribe, just like the desk says. Yeah, click like and subscribe. I'll catch you next time. Bye. Bye.